afternoon once again. Uh, today, uh, we have uh, Mr. V. Rajendran, advocate, mainly handling cybercrime and banking security related cases. So he is also acting as a chairman of Digital Security Association of India, Chennai. He is a certified cyber forensic examiner from IDRBG, Hyderabad. Sir has contributed articles in various academic and professional journals and appeared in electronic and print media. He has authored the book on IT security for bankers and cyber crimes and fraud management in banks, both published by IIBF and being used as a course fair for the certificate course for bank offices throughout India. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Usha. Thanks for the opportunity. My my young learned friend Saravanan and uh, respected Dr. Geeta and others in the team. Am I audible? Is my voice clear? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Is my voice clear? Is my pronunciation yes, sir. You can proceed, for all of you? Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. You can proceed, sir. Yeah, okay. Saravanan, can I go ahead now? Yeah, please, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay, okay. Very good. Uh, uh, Saravanan, should I make it completely English? Or can you slightly mix it with Tamil? Do you feel uh, what is the level of audience? What is the level of uh, participation there? Sir, uh, throughout yes, India, participants are right? uh, joined, sir, actually. So, as your, uh, yes, sir, as your comfortness, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, since it's a faculty development program, I think language would not be a problem mm -hmm. because normally freshers in college, we used to mix it slightly with Tamil. Yeah, no. I think the necessity, okay, the necessity may not be here. Okay. Mm, okay, well, sir. Can I start now? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. You can proceed, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. So the yeah, ah, please, sir. Okay. Please, sir. Please, sir. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you once again, Dr. Usha, Dr. Gita, Saravanan, and others in the team. It's really a good opportunity. Let me start with uh, conveying my best wishes for a happy new year to everyone in the college. May the may God bless us with your really a successful, uh, eventful, and above all, a peaceful and a healthy uh, uh, as a, as opposed to the last year when we had to face a lot of problems, pandemic, work from home, and people not meeting one another. Like uh, So may God be with us and showering us with uh, a good health, prosperity, making this year a really a healthy for every one of us. Health foremost, and perhaps a wealth, peace, and prosperity in that order. Okay, so with that wishes, let me start my session. A uh, first session, Dr. Selvakumar was going at length on the cyber crime or threats and various kinds of threats and cyber attacks. Since this, uh, this is an FTP uh, mainly on um, uh, uh, cyber security and the topic which I have taken or which has been given to me is cyber laws. I'll be touching briefly upon the uh, information technology related legislations in India, in India uh, specifically, with a particularly brief reference to other prominent nations also, perhaps I may have to touch upon. Particularly, we'll be talking about the Information Technology Related Act, that is IT Act, originally in 2000, IT Act 2008, and perhaps two, three other legislations which are already related to information technology in India, like uh, copyrights and all that. And the acts which are emerging, which are yet to be introduced, like the act on data privacy, some regulations on cryptocurrency and all that. Cryptocurrency being an interesting topic, I thought I can add that. So I have added that. So with this, let me start. Okay, is it okay for you, Saravanan? Okay, now, um, okay, next slide. Now, uh, basically, uh, a nation is driven not just by law. A nation is driven by its own ethics, culture, the law, the rules, the standards, and traditions which have been running in the nation for centuries and decades, and uh, like what we say, you know, Patreta Yuga, Kali Yuga, Dwapra Yuga, and other Yuga, 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 and other, like uh, the days of Vedas and Upanishads. We can say perhaps about 300, 400 years back, most of the legislation which we speak about now were not there. Indian Penal Code was not there this kind of a judiciary, uh, this kind of a police was not there, but police force 
something like a judicial force, the people taking a decision, some gram panchayat level, something, those things were there. So people were anyway bound by the tradition conforming to the particular culture. So what is the culture in one particular part of the land may differ from another. After India became independent, there were there were uniform legislations, uniform act and all that. Everything came subsequently and then there were a lot of standards. So we also conformed to some standards which internationally other developed countries also were following. So with that, not compromising on our ethics and culture, keeping up with our tradition and society and keeping up with our necessity to conform to these standards of international level, many of the laws have been formed. Some of these laws which we use today were uh, promulgated, were enacted in pre-independence days. Uh, many came subsequently. Some were amended subsequently out of 1947. Okay, next. Uh, what is the next law? What is the need for a law? Where there is a crime, there must be a law. So what is the genesis of a crime? Crime is as old as human being, right? As old as human being. Right, the first uh, human being, Adam and Eve, as per the Western mythology, uh, as per the Indian mythology, the days of the Vedas and Upanishads, even Kautilya Sartre Shastra, Vedas, Upanishads, they speak about crime, they speak about something like a jurisprudence, a ministerial or a judicial uh, uh, inquiry, punishment, crime and punishment have existed centuries, thousands, thousands of years back. So what is the uh, genesis of a crime? A man's need, greed. Or an intention to commit a crime. In Tamil, we say manna say, penna say, ponna say, like you know, the the asai or the need or the greed after women or wealth or power or so. Even power is a greed. Power also makes you commit a crime, isn't it? When you when people long for a power, they tend to commit a crime so that they come to the particular post. I mean, most of the uh, films also we have seen film stories based on this. So it could be need, greed, or intention. Second is opportunity. When there is an opportunity, certainly there will be a crime. The opportunity given to a pickpocket leads uh, the crime of pickpocket. The opportunity of uh, a house remaining unlocked, remaining open, or the opportunity given to a given to a robber or given to uh, given to a rapist or any other a burglar and other keeping your house open or uh, something like that. The opportunity is given. It makes a crime. Even a criminal who is half-hearted, he'll become a full criminal because there is an opportunity. The third is rationalization, which is more psychological. Every criminal uh, rationalizes in himself, what's wrong if I commit a crime? Does he not commit a crime? Do the politicians, they are not, are they not corrupt? Do the government officials, are they not bad? Do the IAS officials, they are not bad? Do the IPS officials, they are not bad? Are they, is he not bad? Is he not bad? Like, this kind of justification we have in committing a crime. Whoever is corrupt, no, he thinks of others who are corrupt. Whenever you go in a road, in a one-way traffic, when the police catches you, the first thing you tell the police is that, sir, I'm not the first person, sir. There are so many others also who are also going in the same one way. You are not catching him. Or I'm not the only one not wearing a helmet. Or I'm not the only one driving a car without, say, without a seatbelt. You see that lady, she's driving. You see that mine and, uh, and that boy is driving. So we rationalize, we justify. These are all the three aspects of a crime. Okay. Now, in a study of cyber crime, especially with regard to cyber security, we'll be focusing more on opportunity because need, greed will anyway be there. Nothing can be done to prevent it. Rationalization is more on psychology. We are not uh, students of psychology. So, we'll be focusing on opportunity. The more we give opportunity, the more is the compromise on cybersecurity. Or you plug the opportunity. Don't give any opportunity. Your cyber is, cyberspace is secure. So more of cyber security is less of opportunity. We'll be focusing on the opportunity aspect. That is the uh, one aspect of the fraud triangle. Okay, next, uh, next, sir. So, Cyber security or cyber crime is not new. As I told you, crime is as old as a uh, human being. So, only thing the cyber security, cyber crime, the variant is different. About thousand years back, there were robbers in forests and jungles, in uh, in ill lit lanes, the lanes where there were no proper light. 
robbers in the night robbers were going in uh, i mean going in horses or robbers who wanted to rob you of the money now they are robbers they don't come in horses they don't come in the night they only have a keyboard and a mouse that's all more of technology technology enables you to commit a robbery that is what exactly you, i mean cyber crime i just given you a list of the popular cyber crime this is not a comprehensive list just randomly i picked some of those things which frequently we uh listen we read we hear about in paper in media in tv and social network sites and all that only very selective list are given even in fact yesterday's newspaper for about two three days newspapers are going agog a lot of news coming with uh, um, news about chinese um, app loan apps loan apps from china today also they said our hundreds of crores they have, uh, have been defrauded and four or five chinese nationals have been arrested we have only heard about african nationals or 490 nigerian fraud being reported african nationals coming to india for education they commit cyber crime they are getting they are getting uh, arrested for the first time chinese nationals chinese nationals in india they are popular more for their spying apps see apps like uh, um, apps like hello or tiktok or other things which have already been banned by the government many hardware and software apps and internationally also even us also openly directly said that most of the chinese software and hardware they are actually basically spying so this kind of thing china was not new people have been accusing internationally china was being accused now chinese persons nationals coming to india luring you with apps loan apps and committing a cyber attack this is something new so this is what is uh, going uh, latest trend i would say this is what is trending in cyber crime in fact yesterday i gave an interview in sun tv also today i think it must be telecast in about uh, sometime in the afternoon about the uh, chinese apps the chinese national their influence on indian economy how it's a techno legal issue so loan offer and shaming shaming the people advance fee fraud there are so many things which are technology based crimes there are so many things which are network based crimes these are purely technical in fact on this particular list i don't want an exhaustive list selvak kumar already spoke to you about uh, a uh, dui attack did you attack cyber crime for sale he used a very fancy interesting phrase like cyber crime for uh, sale i mean what we normally say is is internet as a service network as a service iaas neas no like um, uh, cloud computing as a service like cyber crime is a service hacking as a service if you want to hack somebody hack somebody's uh, some company's website what is uh, in technological parlance called a cyber espionage cyber espionage the spying a rival company's uh, uh, system and trying to gather who are his clients what is his methodology what is his design can i do that with the help of hackers so hackers are becoming a big profession these days so like iot devices intrusion prevention system uh, wishing smishing wishing uh, uh, all these things he use i don't want to repeat all those things so the card scheming card cloning insider threats insider threats they continue to be a major threat uh, i won't say for a culturally traditional and uh, yeah, ethically stronger nation like in india but for a, yeah, a technologically developed country like uh, us or uk or even china insider threat has always been a major concern at least in india insider threat that is a company's employee Uh, doing something against their own company something like a, a treasury or a, um, a breach of trust this kind of thing is not so popular but the day is emerging okay next uh, next mo next slide next slide sarvanan you are there ah, okay so the crimes in the uh, cyber space just have a look at all these things how exactly are the different type of crimes how they come as i was telling you about opportunity most of these are as a result of you are giving an opportunity in the request of in the regulations sometimes the regulations in india is itself not very adequate in india one peculiar thing is that either sometimes the regulation is not adequate sometimes it is adequate but not stronger sometimes it is stronger and severe but the criminological investigation procedure is so long 
the criminal gets a comfort feeling that whatever happens in India, don't worry, I, I won't be caught. I got this code, lower court, higher court, higher court, highest court, high court, Supreme Court. I can drag the case for years and years, but don't worry. There are advocates who give their comfort to the criminal. Don't worry, boss, I'm here with you. Don't worry, you won't be arrested, you won't be in prison. I am here with you. You can take the case for years and years. So this is a kind of a, a comfort feeling which the criminal gets in India. What they say is severity of punishment and certainty of punishment. It is not the severity of loss. It is the certainty of punishment which should be there. Certainty of punishment is not there. We have severity of loss. The law is severe. But the certainty of punishment is not there in India. There are other things like system-based vulnerabilities. Intermediary is vulnerability. Who is an intermediary? A network service provider, internet service provider. Even the bank which handles your data, Airtel, Airtel, I mean, Airtel uh, Vodafone, BS, uh, BSNL, Reliance, everything, whoever handles your data, stores your data. They are all intermediaries. If there is a vulnerability in their server, then the ultimate loser is not that company, he is the owner of the data, that is you and I. So if a bank website is hacked or a bank data is stolen, then it is your credit card data, your internet banking user or your credentials like account number and all that, which gets compromised, right? So poor risk management. With all that, the deliberate attempt, Cyber criminals are always on the prowl. They want the opportunities. They are waiting for the opportunities so that they can straight away log in and take n number of data, steal the data. Next, sir. Next slide. Okay. So this is the basic difference between uh, cyber crime and uh, uh, normal crime. It, it's a very simple slide. I don't want to. I don't want to add anything to it. Very simple. You'll be very easily able to understand that. Normal crime is physical, it's tangible, it's uh, painful, somebody hits you. In a cyber crime, the biggest thing is that sometimes you don't even know that you are a victim. Suppose your purse has been picked or you have been burgled, somebody beats you. You feel the, you feel the pain or you feel the purse is lost or the golden ring or the golden chain or something uh, which you are wearing is lost. Immediately you know that you are the victim, you have lost that money. But in a cyber crime, when your account in the money is stolen or you are being shamed in a public uh, social networking site, somebody has misused or abused your photo in a social networking site, sometimes you won't even know unless somebody sees it, sees it and, and tells you. Or you don't look at the mobile, you don't even know, you are not alert to look at the SMS in the, in the mobile that your account has been debited. So when you don't know that, you won't even know. It takes sometime even two, three hours or about a day or two for you to realize that your photo has appeared in a Facebook or a Telegram or Instagram or WhatsApp in an objectionable manner. You won't even know it. So there is a basic difference. Then you have to look for the evidence, where to get, where to get the evidence, how to go about, which police to go, what is the email ID, how to go about, where to take the evidence, all these things. So, Entirely, it's different from a normal crime. So this way, cyber crime is a bit peculiar. It gives a comfort feeling to the uh, criminal that uh, criminal is always faceless. He would say that my face won't appear. They won't even be able to nab me because I'm doing it only through a network. Sometimes the criminal may not be in your town, your village, or not even in your country itself, which, in which case the entire situation becomes highly complex. The police will find it very difficult. Okay, next slide. Uh, next. So, with this backdrop, when e commerce was growing in India, e commerce was growing in India during the end 1990s, there was a need that India also should have a proper act, a legislative system mechanism for uh, to combat cyber crime, to fight cyber crime. This necessity was felt in India. By that time, advanced countries like UK, USA, they also had their own Internet Communication Act or data, I mean, uh, uh, cyber crime act or cyber crime rules, something like that was in place. Electronic records was even not recognized. Then India had to recognize electronic evidence. So with that in view, India passed this act called Information Technology Act 2000. So in 2000 end, it was, uh, um, uh, 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 it got the accent of the uh, president. 
it's 17th October 2000, 2000 is more than 20 years now. Then, but the main crux or the objective of the act was not to define cybercrime. In fact, interestingly, even the word cybercrime does not appear in the IT Act anywhere. Cybercrime is not defined in there. The word cybercrime is not even defined there. It does not give you the list of cybercrimes in India. Why? Because the objective of the act was not to talk more about cybercrimes. It was only a, the first move to legally recognize electronic records. Before that, records were always manual. In the case of electronic uh, commerce also, we had to take out a printout or the invoice, send it to an abroad when there is a letter of credit import or export kind of a trade environment, abroad, I mean, across different, different nations. You will have to take the invoice, a printout, or give a letter of credit or an agreement to purchase and all that. Send it by post, it may take about 10 days or 15 days. To put an end to that, telex was there in place. So telex was taken as a confirmation to confirmatory uh, message to give an authenticity for such electronic communication. Cyber crime was there. I mean, IT Act was there. It legally recognized electronic records. So, ah, so many uh, uh, definitions were there. Many important words were defined. Interestingly, definitions. Next slide. Definitions. Next slide. So the words like um, the computer was very generally defined. It does not exactly say a laptop or a computer system. Any electronic device with an input, output, and a processor and a storage can be taken as a computer. So even a high-end electronic oven or a high-end mobile or the uh, mobile of these days, Android-based mobile mobile of these days, a high-end microwave oven, high-end uh, uh, gate opening system or a high-end a washing machine everything can be called a computer as per the definition in this act next next we'll go straight to some of the important sections okay next sir. so uh, this again i'm on definition next slide next slide we'll be talking about a data theft okay what exactly is data theft data theft basically data copying unlike a physical theft wherein the stolen article itself is the evidence in the case of data theft suppose you have a data which I'm stealing, I'm putting it in a network. It goes to 9,900 people, it goes around 10,000 10, people. One of those, he puts it to another 1,000 people. So there are about uh, 1 lakh or 11,000 or 50,000 copies of the data available. Now, which is the original, which is the copy? Nobody would know. Because data theft basically is data copy. There is nothing like an evidence. But when I steal your gold ring or your money purse, your money purse lying in my pocket is the evidence. In the case of a data theft, it is not exactly data theft. It is a data copy or unauthorized access of the data, which may lead to loss of the data. Loss does not mean physical loss. It is an unauthorized copying, which may result in financial loss to you. Next. Next. So in this background, the IT Act was formed. It has around 90 sections and uh, number 13 chapters all those things are technical detail we'll go to the next important section 43a next uh, next slide next slide uh, this slide is the most important one section 43a even till date this section is being spoken about it says a uh, reasonable security practices for corporate suppose there is a college uh, or an or an institution your college would have given an email id to you dot uh, mgr i mean something like that Right, dot mgr dot ac dot in means academic institution India something like that. Suppose I'm a faculty member in your college, I have my own email ID like rajendran gmail dot com, and as a faculty member in your college, I have an email ID rajendran at mgr univ dot ac dot in. Okay, now from a personal email ID, I'm sending a derogatory mail to a VIP. From rajendran at gmail.com your derogatory or threatening mail to a vap something like that so police can take action against me for sending a bomb hoax or a threatening mail or an obnoxious objectionable mail uh, because that mail has come from my personal id right but can you please share the screen again share the screen as a black patch okay okay uh, no. 
the shared screen has a black patch. Somebody is raising the query. Why the black patch? Sarvan, any issue there technically? Sir, uh, shall we stop and restart the presentation, sir? Ah, okay. Uh, because the black patch is coming, no? Yeah, due, due to that, due to that, only, sir. Okay, okay. Would you want me to wait for a few seconds? Uh, please, sir. Please, sir. One second, sir. Sure. Stop okay, stop. no issue. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Is it okay, sir? Now? Yes, sir. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, please proceed, sir. Fantastic, Saranan. Thank you. Very nice of you. Very good. Thanks, Nath, sir. Precisely. Very good. Good job. <laughs> okay. Now, as per section 43, what it says is when I send a personal email from Gmail, I am responsible. But if the same mail, same content goes from rajendran at mgr.ac.in, that email is for the corporate email of the institution. So, the institution also is equally responsible for sending that mail. Institution cannot take protection or umbrage protection under the clause stating that I am not responsible for the email of all the professors and faculty members in the college. Everybody has got his own responsibility. How do you expect my college or my organization? Suppose I'm an employee of Wipro. Then suppose I'm, I'm giving an email rajendran at vipro.com. Okay. In those cases, the company or the organization cannot take protection under the um, argument stating that I am not responsible. The class says the, he is responsible because reasonable security practices should have been there for giving email ID to responsible persons, for having something like an IDS and IPS, something like a search engine, or yeah. A spam identifier or something like a hard word identifier, something like a bomb threat identifier, your firewall should be capable of all these things. When the firewall triggers something unusual, some mail is going to the Prime Minister or Chief Minister with some, uh, with some objectionable content, your firewall should be able to trigger that. For having failed to put those things in place, the corporate also is responsible along with the person who is responsible. So this is the strength of this section. As a responsible corporate uh, teachers and faculty members in information security, I'm pretty sure all of you must be knowing it. I just thought I can repeat it. Not that you would know, most of you must be knowing this. Okay, next, oh, next, next slide. So this is something in adjudication, all civil offenses. When somebody files a case against another person and the uh, 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 request prayer is not for arresting that person. I only want my money back. When you lose money in an ATM or internet bank, we don't want the bank manager to be arrested. I only want my money, isn't it? So it's only a civil dispute, a civil claim. In those cases, the act says you don't need to file a criminal complaint. You don't need to go to the police station. You only go to the IT adjudicator, the IT secretary of any state. For example, in Tamil Nadu, the IT secretary who is in Fort St. George. Fort St. George, IT secretary, similarly in Karnataka, Maharashtra, every state, every state has an IT department, IT secretary, a, a top level IAS official. He has got the powers of a civil court to examine the witnesses, take up your complaint, and then give the judgment. This is the uh, strength of this section. But practically, IAS officers are normally very busy. They don't take up such cases. But when you repeatedly approach them, certainly they do take up. In Karnataka, Maharashtra, even in Chennai also, at least uh, uh, eight or 10 judgments have so far given as a result of filing a complaint with IT adjudication. Okay, next. And next we speak about the actual criminal offenses. Though it's not an act which has defined the criminal offense, the act also speaks about some of the important criminal offenses. I don't want to go by section by section because otherwise it will become a session in law. Session in law will always be boring. I, I don't normally take up the section number and read out the sections. I'll just tell you the gist. Okay. Tampering with source code, all of you know, that's a criminal offense. And then offensive messages through communication service are posting an offensive message in a Facebook or a WhatsApp kind of an environment in a social networking site like uh, an offense which is uh, 
repetitive knowing to be false uh repetitive which is annoying if it is annoying to others when you post that message which is repetitive and when you also know it's false then it's a punishable offense with this section there are many errors police started misusing this section sometime in 2012 13 14 and all that then cases were filed in madras high court in bengal west bengal against namta banerji she was not happy about uh, this case even the even pandicherry government they were not happy about this case one famous case in maharashtra was the shreya single case shreya single case in maharashtra uh, when bal thakare died somebody posted a facebook posting for an old man dying of old age at the age of 90 should bombay city be paralyzed and some girl liked it very simple message highly harmless very innocuous nothing uh, no law and order issue but still the bombay police arrested that girl so seeing a lot of misuse of this section the matter went up to supreme court supreme court finally thought that this section itself uh, is prone to be misused they struck down this section now this section is not there so unfortunately if a, if an offensive message comes in facebook or a whatsapp today there is no it act provision there is no provision in the it act to fight it police have to resort only to indian criminal court the normal uh, the normal cases of uh, uh, defaming others or uh, uh, defaming a girl or workplace uh, annoying to ladies annoying uh, workplace annoying to women the posco and act uh, like those things only those things only police resort to then the dishonestly receiving stolen computer stolen electronic signature a privacy violation privacy means posting obnoxious pictures of uh, uh, girls uh, uh, through an electronic communication then cyber terrorism 67 is a very powerful section that is pornography posting any pornography content in any social network website or saving them posting them or sharing it also you cannot say that i did not post it somebody has sent it to me i only shared it i only shared it even that is an offense as per the it amendment act next section next next we speak about now if some offense takes place in idea in a cyber crime in a digital space who is the person who is authorized to block that website cert in computer emergency response team india computer emergency response team india computer emergency response team cert it is there in every nation like cert us is there cert uk cert singapore similarly cert india is computer emergency response team india this is a department coming under the ministry of information technology government of india separately headed by you know, there be an officer of a chief secretary rank in the uh, ministry uh, that department has got the powers to monitor intercept and block three kinds of powers first to monitor the website then intercept the website then block the website if necessary that's uh, that's how frequently we read supreme court has uh, has uh, uh, taken down this website so many pornographic say 800 pornographic uh, sites were uh, taken down our madras high court has ordered this pornographic website or this trademark uh, violation infringement of trademark this website has been ordered to be taken down all these orders are only result of this website then police have got powers to confiscate those things are there next we will go to the next slide next this act has amended uh, indian evidence act and uh, reserve bank of india act in the penal code and all that indian evidence act has been essentially bank as book evidence has been essentially amended to pay way for recognition of electronic evidence whatever is stored in electronically whatever is stored electronically in your computer in your server in your server or in your mobile can be taken as evidence the printout of that can be taken and produced to the court but the printout must be accompanied properly by a certificate called the 65b certificate i think next time speaks about it i am not very sure about it if it doesn't come let me tell you 65b certificate section 65b of the indian evidence act that certificate should state that this is the printer taken at this time from this server from this laptop and to my knowledge this printer is a non tampered one this data is uh, in this server or laptop is a uh, uh, preserved in a secured manner without this certificate simple printer is not valid 
somehow even some banks the reported companies they take a printout they append a line at the bottom this is a computer generated printout and hence does not require signature as if the law permits it no this sentence is absolutely wrong from a legal perspective no law permits this sentence no act in india permits this sentence this sentence is a misconceived notion or a misunderstanding of the legal provision of the it act or the indian evidence act or the bankers book evidence act no printout can certainly be taken for its face value with no signature it is not there otherwise i'll i'll simply take a letter head in my in, in an ordinary a4 paper or possibly in a costly paper in a letter head at that mgr i mean uh, university or some company name dear so and so with the with the fact from today you are appointed sorry sorry okay i'll simply take out a print out i'll simply state that dear so and so you are simply appointed as a professor or a hod on the salary of this one you are specifically principal no signature i'll simply state that uh, this is a print a computer generated printer it has no signature is required is it valid does the law permit it no the law does not permit it so this is a misconception okay next slide next slide. so this is a convenience only we can at best say that this is a convenience for authenticity you have to go to the prospective bank or the company or the organization and get your thing uh, certified but you can act upon it when you are sure that it has come from the company when you know that the company is not going to dispute it we can act upon it for the record purpose or for the purpose of production in any court of law you may have to get it authenticated this is what the act says next 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 slide now other than the it act let us for about 5 minutes let us look at the other important acts other important acts which also have a bearing on cyber crime just like information technology act there are some sections of indian penal code in the penal code itself is around uh, 161 years yeah 161 year old act but some of these sections were some of these sections in the act have been amended after the introduction of after the passing of information technology amendment act like the section on cheating section on evidence section on defrauding section on blackmailing extortion now section on extortion 383 of ipc it has been read with the electronic evidences or section on cheating like 420 or uh, forgery of electronic records 463 464 electronic records all these sections will have a bearing on the information technology act or information technology amendment act on next next we will go to the next slide we will go to the next slide yeah next slide next sarvana next ah okay other than indian penal code this is these are some interesting act which are already there in india what is norm popularly called ipr i think all the faculty members since this a faculty development program everybody most of the participants at least if not all most must be faculty members you would have known what is an intellectual property intellectual property is not a physical property anything which comes from your brain which from your uh, knowledge which comes based on your intellect is an intellectual property like for example we we write a kavidai we write a poetry yeah a poem or a text or a software program or a hardware patent or a design of a vehicle or a design of a chair or something design of a house anything all these are intellectual property right so you can preserve it you can ensure that nobody copies it for commercial purpose the emphasis here is commercial purpose there are four act with regard to intellectual property in india four act one is the trademark act second is copyright act third is patent act designs designs act and patent act are very very small there are not many cases here trademark and copyrights are very popular You know, our high court itself is flooded with so many uh, cases on trademark and copyright actually even about one month back i had been a party to one of the arguments in a uh, in a trademark act i think cycle or uh, something like that one agarbatti very popular brand uh, and somebody else who was not having agarbatti was doing was doing something like a dupe stick 
dup my computer samrani something like that he took the brand of cycle then the point of dispute was that cycle only is a brand for agarbatti not for the dup then dup and agarbatti they are almost very related so the judge took took a view that though this is not a trademark since this was related product you can't say that you are not infringing this also is an infringement of the trademark next slide so the trademark copyrights they are all based on intellectual property the protection of rights for misuse the basically the crux of argument in all these cases would be making a money taking the advantage of somebody else's reputation like when you go to the rural place you can have a lot of water bottles uh, with the sticker and color all in blue exactly looking like bislery but one change is spelling b a s l b a l s e r i or b a s l e i r something like that so they will go to the court they will even when a case is filed they will say that no 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 it is not bislery it is a bislayer only not bislery i am not that company i never claimed that i am bislery but deceptively they will use the same color same paper same thing so when you claim damages you are entitled most probably most of the cases the court gives a verdict in your favor so with a deliberate intention to make money based on the reputation of the opponent then you will be entitled for the compensation okay next 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 so this is what is a trademark i am not going deeper into what is a trademark and all that from a cyber crime perspective i can only take the case of cyber squatting cyber squatting means having a domain name looking like similar to somebody else popular brand knowing fully well that is people are going to be duped that you are that company you now suppose this company does not have a domain name it is a very popular company which has been selling shirt or i mean or pant or chappal or what what about what then you start a domain name only in the domain name you have a similar spelling of that popular company since that company does not have a domain name you only have a domain name that is okay that is understandable but when you use the brand name of that company that color or that logo that chappal or that shirt in your website and procure orders making the people believe that you are that company you are the website of the original company then certainly you are said to do a defraud or infringement in fact such thing happen in cyber squatting itself is a very interesting uh, field if you are interested i can take one more minute i can tell you what happened to mark zuckerberg also the facebook founder you know facebook founder is mark zuckerberg uh, about a couple of years back in fact this case was reported in the papers it's not my case i didn't deal with it it was reported in the paper Mark Zuckerberg was blessed with a third daughter. Already had two daughters. I think third was a third also was a female, something like that. Then he said that I'm going to give the name of uh, some Julian Zuckerberg, something like that. Uh, that's all. So, uh, see, Mark Zuckerberg uh, getting a daughter is a uh, it's a prime time news. Many of the international media they reported he becomes a father once, just like Virat Kohli or uh, uh, I mean, what is the uh, name of the actor whom she has uh, married? Uh, Uh, Sharma, what is Sharma? Virat Kohli. Anushka Sharma. Anushka, exactly. Anushka. Virat and Anushka, they will be blessed with their daughter. Something like that. So this became a very big news during those days, and the paper reported that he has been blessed with their daughter. Fine. The moment the name of the daughter was published in the paper, one boy in Kerala he registered a domain name, Julian Zuckerberg. Dot in, Julian Zuckerberg. Dot org, Julian Zuckerberg. Dot com. Something like that. Because the registering domain name is hardly about hundred, two hundred rupees these days. Spending around thousand rupees, he registered two or three domain names. Then, after about fifteen days only, Mark Zuckerberg realized that he should have a domain name in the name of his daughter. He is considered to be such a big uh, person, genius and all that. He was careless. When he realized that his newborn daughter should have a web uh, uh, a domain name, he went in for registration. Three domains have already been registered by a fourth-year engineer student in Kerala. Then he had to send his Bombay representative. He flew all the way to Kerala. He spoke to their boy. He told that boy to give me all those uh, domain names. I want to use them. Uh, the boy demanded only about thousand dollars, maybe around sixty, seventy thousand rupees. Having spent around thousand rupees, making a profit of seventy thousand rupees in a matter of fifteen days is a big money for that boy. But the boy said, "Making money is not my motive. I wanted Mark to realize that we Indians are also very smart. We can act very smarter." More smarter than you, you may have to come to us. This is an intellectual war which I wanted Mark to understand. 
this was reported in most of the Kerala media. Some Kerala media even reported that uh, he, the boy is a stupid boy. He could have even demanded even ten thousand dollars. So media, you know, media will, will even lure you, will make you, will tempt you. Media said that why did you take me thousand dollars? Mark Zuparu was prepared to pay even ten thousand dollars for that website. So this is what is called a cyber spy. This by itself is not an offense. Because at the time of blocking, he never gave, at the time of booking, he never gave any false idea or anything like that. But when he make others believe that he is a trademark, then that becomes a trademark violation. Okay, next. Uh, so is the case with uh, a trademark, uh, a trademark, and then copyrights. Okay, we'll, next, next. Next is copyright, I think. Copyright is, again, more interesting. Copyright, somebody takes you a, a, takes you a poetry, takes you a book. I mean, copyright violation is more in film world. If somebody registers a domain name, takes a story. Whenever any new film comes, always somebody files a case. This is folly of Master, folly of uh, Kala, folly of, uh, I mean, the story of Kabali, uh, Pat, or whatever, Vijay story, everything. Somebody will file a case, then the judge will hear it for about two minutes, then he will say that it's not your story. So these uh, things keep going. Even Ilya Raja's famous case was there. Uh, his songs, uh, Yale Raja versus SPB, SPB Bada Surudium, Indreko, the Sangeeta, uh, those things. Okay, next. So these are very popular in the case of uh, copyright. Next, we can skip copyright. Next, 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 next. This, this is a copyright infringement. Next. Ah, okay. Now, in future, cyber laws in the future are going to be something like uh, not the existing law, the law has to widespread. It has a uh, wide ranging ramifications law has to look from various angles a 360 degree overview because what is technology for you what is legal for you may be technically illegal because cryptography is just uh, legal but when somebody uses a cryptography for an illegal purpose that becomes illegal like cyber squatting is legal for you and dos Denial of service is just a software program. I can write a program. I can choke the website by um, by sending our 20,000, 30,000 empty data package uh, to choke one particular port, telnet port or FTP port of a server. It is a software capability I'm doing it. But when I do it with a specific intention of choking one particular website, then they're committing, a, committing an offense. So what is technology for you may be illegal. So this is cyber law in future has to look at the technology versus the illegality of using the technology. Let's say cryptography or even a simple thing like scavenging, taking out the data from your mobile, taking out the data from your hard disk is a technology. I can have a tools which will take out the deleted data from your hard disk, deleted data from a mobile, especially the ladies, especially the girls, I can tell you, in the mobile, there is nothing like a deletion. Nothing gets deleted in the mobile. And mobile forensic is very peculiar, very unique compared to hard disk forensics. At least in a hard disk, in the hard disk or in a computer, if you delete it, if you format it repeatedly, or you degauss the format, when you delete the zero sector, it may not be recoverable. Repeated formatting, recovery becomes very difficult. In a mobile, there is nothing like deleted. Even when you feel it's deleted, there are tools which can easily take out the data. Uh, especially for a rugged software like a, like an iOS or an Android based software. And there are so many locally procured, locally developed software, locally pre, uh, developed in Korea and China, like Oppo, uh, Ippo, iMe, Redmi, Realme, Yumi, Vimi, like so many things. We don't even know what is the operating system in which these softwares are there. So nothing is nothing is deleted. Everything can be recovered there. So whatever is there in the in the mobile, if somebody is able to take out the data and then blackmail you. Taking out is a technology. Blackmailing is an offense. So technology leads to offense. So cyber law has to look at these things. How technology is going to be used, misused, abused, overused. Okay, next. Next. So in journalism, in communication, now everybody is a reporter. Everybody is a WhatsApp reporter. Everybody is a WhatsApp journalist. Everybody is a WhatsApp journalist. Everybody takes out a photo, you put it in WhatsApp. We don't even know the WhatsApp photo, which was going there about three years back. We were, again, it's coming. Uh, giving the people as if it's an yesterday's happening, as if it's an yesterday's incident. And uh, it may result in a, in a big land or problem. 
So WhatsApp admin, you have to be very careful. Though technically, legally, WhatsApp admin is not responsible for the uh, content of the uh, WhatsApp, what the members are posting. It's why the IT Act says we're not responsible. But uh, practically speaking, from an IPC angle, from a legal a regulatory investigative perspective, your responsibility could be there. Police can take you to task. Uh, next. Uh, next thing. And the legal position of today's banking. This is what is today's banking. Today's banking is a result of this kind of a technology. Where do you find a human being? There is no human being in today's banking, right? No human being. It's everything is through, is through a cloud. Everything is through a cloud. And uh, there is a person like a Bitcoin or a virus, which is waiting to hack your uh, system with no physical connectivity, waiting to get connected. Next, next, next. In this thing, crypto, Cryptocurrency is the latest. Any ransomware, any amount in technology, in a network, people say you can pay through cryptocurrency. While opening a cryptocurrency account, while opening a Bitcoin account, no ID proof, proof is required. And even legally, the government of India is a bit perplexed. It's confused whether to take the Bitcoin or to nab it, or to curb it, ban it. Bitcoin has been banned by India Government of India sometime back, RBI issued a circular, but unfortunately, next slide, next slide, uh, next slide, okay. So unfortunately, RBI's circular was struck down by Supreme Court. Supreme Court said that this circular of RBI is beyond its powers. So RBI may have to think of some other means to bring a Bitcoin and cryptocurrency within its fold. Right now in India, the legal position is that Bitcoin is not banned. You can open a Bitcoin account. Only thing being, one Bitcoin is around 14 lakhs. If you have around 28 lakhs, you can have two Bitcoins. That's all. Just two Bitcoins. One Bitcoin is 14.5 lakhs. And the rate uh, is so volatile, it keeps changing every, not minute, every second. Every second. What is the Bitcoin value? About 1020 or about... Uh, I mean, 120 or 121 or 122 may be changing because it's a pure supply demand theory kind of mechanism. It does not have any physical uh, physical representation. There is no US dollar, Indian rupee or a Singapore dollar kind of a, a printed uh, thing for a Bitcoin. Nobody can represent it. And there is no regulatory mechanism. No government regulates. If you lose money in a foreign trade, if you lose US dollars in a foreign trade, you can approach the Reserve Bank of India, study that this bank did not follow the norms because of that I lost money. When you lose money in a Bitcoin, there is no Reserve Bank of India. There is no centralized monetary authority to control it. There is no legal redress mechanism. So it's a very major uh, bearing on the economy. It may even destabilize the economy. If Bitcoin is not uh, uh, banned, its impact on the economy will be very huge. Next, uh, next slide, next slide. So the legal position is that the banning was lifted. Supreme Court has permitted. So the RBI has to go on appeal, or the government of India has to go on appeal. The government of India still has the legally enacting power to ban Bitcoin. But government is hesitating. I do not know what the government has, uh, is going to do. Uh, we, uh, people in information system security, have been thinking about it. I've been talking about it. We only hope that uh, good sense will prevail on the government and RBI. It will be banned in the large interest of the nation. Next. Next slide. Okay. And again, privacy. This again, another important uh, legislation which is already not there, which is yet to come. There was a famous Puttaswamy case in which the Supreme Court said that privacy is a fundamental right for any, any person in India. The Supreme Court has said that privacy is a fundamental right. Having said privacy is a fundamental right, Supreme Court has not defined what is privacy. Supreme Court should define what is privacy. Without defining, it has only said that it is a fundamental right. When it's a fundamental right, what is privacy? Privacy for me may not be privacy for you. Privacy for me today may not be privacy for me tomorrow. Privacy for a cinema star may not be privacy for me. A cinema star would like his uh, uh, picture to be photographed when he is walking in a road. 
but when a college girl or a college faculty when she is walking in the road she would not like her picture to be photographed she has got every right to object but as a celebrity would welcome it so what is privacy for her may not be privacy for the other person what is privacy today may not be privacy for me when, when i am on a, a personal visit in a tourist spot like what you are correct canal there i would like to have more of privacy so privacy must be defined the data privacy act when it comes it will be it will defining it next next slide next slide so we are very so the privacy has got much of ramifications like uh, there are details what you know about you what everyone knows about you what you two don't know about you when it completely profiling your character profiling your dress profiling how you behave may result in something which you not have noticed which will be your quality so this again a profiling with the criminal or the techno or the investigators or the psychology experts may, may be doing about you then what nobody knows about you but known only after a complete profile next slide next slide next 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 okay so this act when it comes this act already has been tabled in the parliament as it been referred to an expert panel of the mps minakshi lekhi you know, then considered to be very tech savvy and educated uh, uh, a lady uh, she is a member of the committee in fact south madras mp also is a member of the committee and shashi tarur also very tech savvy educated uh, uh, mp from uh, kerala representing congress i he is also a member of the committee the committee is looking into it when the committee gives approval the act may be passed any time maybe in about a few weeks or about a month when the act comes this act is going to introduce something like a concept of anonymization data may be segregated as uh, uh, what is personal what is not personal like critical data or sensitive data critical data to be processed only in india sensitive personal data may be processed outside in india but they be processed outside in india but they, uh, they have to be stored only in india like then okay next next slide next slide this act also oh that point is not there okay this slide also gives you something like a powers to right to forget you can tell your google or you can tell the data providers you delete every data about me if somebody searching about me i don't want my picture or this website or my data to be shown in google this act empowers me this act empowers the citizen a right to be forgotten after about one year after about two years you can tell that uh, this data should be forgotten should be deleted for example you are giving your aadhar copy to a bank for the opening of the account after the account is closed you can tell the bank that my aadhar copy which i gave to you for the maintenance of the account should not be preserved by you should not be used by you after the account is closed so this is what is called a right to be forgotten or right to be deleted you can insist this act empowers you even the class and like i agree when you are downloading an app in a mobile it runs to two three pages simply either you say you agree or you don't agree only when you say agree the, the app will work this act gives a peculiar powers to you stating that this i agree but not the class number 3 or class number 4 except though all other classes i agree so every app in future may have to give you this facility like a partially agree i do not know how the app providers are going to account for it are going to give the uh, give the technological capability for this next next slide i think we are coming to the end of it next slide so in a network always remember yeah, nothing is confidential everything is open only so in india perhaps as part of the cyber security a better coordination will come we take pride in telling that uh, we are the it super power we are the technology super power we developed a much more software but we don't have our own operating system we don't have our own search engine we depend upon google for search engine we depend upon uh, us for an operating system windows or ios and all that and we depend we depend upon china for the hardware we depend we depend upon japan for the sound system and uh, korea and smaller country for the chip so with the chip not from us sound cables not from us speaker not from us operating system not from us the os not from us the search engine not from us india is considering itself to be a superpower because the data is india's 
can't we have our own operating system? A good attempt was made. CDAC, Government of India Department, developed our own operating system called the BOSS, B O S S, Bharat Operating System Services, B O S S. So the government has to propagate it, uh, has to publicize it. So yeah, whenever I address the college people and college faculty, I used to tell them, motivate them, you try to improve, try to enhance India's strength by having our own chip, our own hard disk, our own operating system, so that India deserves the right of place in the international market, like having our own operating system competing with China and US. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Next slide, I think, is the last one. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, thanks for the opportunity given to me to have the faculty development uh, faculty of uh, the Dr. University. Uh, possibly another two, three minutes, or possibly about five minutes. Uh, we have time. Any questions and answers I can take, depending upon uh, your interest. Thank you, Rajendran, sir. Thank you so much. You have explained almost all the concepts, starts from frauds and crimes, latest in cyber crimes. Cyber crimes is as normal crimes, adjudication or in the IT Act, cyber squatting, cyber loss of the future, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, etc. 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 It was really a wonderful session, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I'll uh, check the chat box, sir. If, if there is any question, uh, I'll ask. Sir. Okay. One second. Chat box, please share the screen again, black patch, and you know, also share this PDF. Wonderful session. <clears throat> this session. Sam. Sam. Sir, one question is there. If kids in school indulge in cyberbullying, is it punishable? Huh? Huh? Yeah, if I kids, think... yeah, if kids in school indulge okay. in cyberbullying, is it punishable? Yeah, the children, the punishable for the children, in fact, Indian Penal Code is a bit peculiar. Anybody less than 18 is not punishable. The crimes committed by the children, they can be sent to the Juvenile Justice Board, Juvenile JJB. That's why even in the very popular, infamous case of rape case also in Delhi, uh, Nirbhaya case, a famous case. Other people, one of the boys was only uh, out of the four people, four men who were raped that girl. One was 17 years and five months or something. So peculiarly, the judge could not give him a uh, sentence. He was uh, made to go to juvenile justice board only. So Indian jurisdictional system is like that. The children cannot be punished. They can't be told to take up any criminal punishment. They can be Tamil Sirudhirutta Palli Ghanu Soluvo, a juvenile justice board. Uh, they can be sent to that. They can be kept under surveillance until they attain, uh, attain majority. When they attain majority, they should be properly consoled. They will be let off only. Thank so, you, sir. Thank the, you. the indirect punishment of uh, the mobile is under the custody of a father or mother or any teacher whose mobile has been misused for not keeping proper care of your mobile, for giving your mobile uh, without taking any proper uh, uh, care, that adult can be punished. Why you were so careless for that? That is why in the Chennai Commissioner, he came out with a beautiful directive last year, when a boy of 16 or 17 years is driving a car or a scooter, meets an accident, the father would be punished. It was a very brilliant uh, rule brought out in Chennai, like it was originally brought out in Ch in Delhi, many other commissioners also have got it for having given your scooter or your car for having permitted your child, your boy or girl who is not even 80, who, is, who cannot have a driving license, for having permitted that person to drive your vehicle, you are punishable. So that kind of punishment can be given. So in that case, fine will also be imposed to the parents, no, sir. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course, certainly, certainly, parents will be. Uh, penalty will be even not only penalty in Chennai. The police said that the father will be punished, punished. Uh, he can be criminally imprisoned. Okay, sir. okay, sir. Sir, thank you so much, sir. The, I think there is no further questions. It's uh, very clear, it seems. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, Rajendran, sir. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Dr. Gita, uh, Madam Usha, Saravanan, and the entire team. Thanks for the uh, good opportunity. My best, uh, uh, my new wishes to everyone in the college. Thank you.